consider that robotics is a game changer. Just like the internet has sort of changed how we think about things over the last 15 years, robotics is going to do that for the next decade. So this is why we think it's very important to do this. And we came together, a, a large number from the community, to define a roadmap to say how can commercial robotics be used in the US, and in particular, how can we use some robots to empower the American workforce so that we can grow the economy. Robotics, as I already said, is an enormously large field. So for that reason, we divided it into four different areas where we did in-depth uh, sort of analysis. The first one was in manufacturing and logistics. The second one was in medicine and healthcare. The third one in service applications. All of these three are sort of driven forward by what are the market needs. And then we said, well, that's good. But there are also the possibility that there could be blue sky research that would be a game changer. And for that reason, we had a fourth workshop that was more on what are some of the emerging technologies, what's out there that would help us break this forward. Let me briefly go and look at some of what are some of the main results that's in the roadmap. Uh, before I do this, let me briefly mention one of the things that we've of course taken into account is that if you look at sort of the populational statistics or the populational pyramid for the US, over time, we will see a significant growth at the top. This is unfortunately a significant growth in the elderly population. That's going to challenge our society in a number of ways. What are we doing in manufacturing? About 11% of the GDP today is directly in the manufacturing industry. There is a significant follow-on industry in terms of materials, in terms of handling, in terms of logistics that feed into this. So in reality, something like 30% of our GDP is actually directly related to manufacturing goods. We need to have robots that are much simpler to use, they have to be much more versatile, and they have to be much more flexible. Another area related to this is in the area of logistics. Whenever you go to the grocery store and buy something, that particular item has been on at least one truck, but it's typically been on eight or 10 trucks from manufacturing until it arrives in your shelf. And only about 15% of the overall process has been automated so it's very costly, both in terms of manpower and in terms of energy. And the estimate is that you can actually optimize this process something like 20 to 30 percent, which would imply that your grocery store prices could be reduced by something like 5 percent. To do this, we need to have flexible palletizing. They have to be easier to program. We need to do small series, and we need to be able to do delivery just on time. We try to do to make sure that we are addressing really the societal needs. We've done this where we've had sort of on the uh, right hand side mapped out what are the applications that we consider to be some of the real game changers from that we mapped out what are the key uh, capabilities that we need that we don't have today and from this we then in the uh, on the left hand side looked at these are the technologies that we need to invest in if we want to make this happen so there's a very clear link between here are here are the money here's where we can make the dollars and here is the associated science that we need to undertake to be able to do this Medical robotics is uh, really being a game changer. It's faster, it's better, it's cheaper intervention. So what we really need is that we need to take these out of the lab, we need to transfer them, so we need to go from the bench to the bedside to really capitalize on these and show this is what we can do. In terms of healthcare robotics, we need to be able to do rehabilitation, we need to be able to help people in their homes as they grow old, they get limited mobility, they need to be rehabilitated. So there we really have a new generation of systems that are coming out that will help us provide better quality of care, better quality of life for, for everyone. So that's an important area. Another area is in terms of professional services. Here is really about empowering uh, field applications. This goes back to automating farms. John Deere is working on that and saying already in a few years we can have almost automated farms. Uh, we're seeing this in forestry, which is a big area. We're seeing this in mining. So there are quite a number of opportunities here to do this so that we can keep areas like forestry here rather than having them outsourced to South America and to other places. In terms of domestic services, U.S. is already the market leader. It's very much about assisting people in their homes. It's about automating the chores. Here you're seeing vacuum cleaners, lawnmowers, solar-powered lawnmower. It's a green lawnmower. Uh, and also entertainment products. Another area when we do this is of course to make sure that we do education and training. It's very important that we use this to develop the workforce. 
We need to have the workforce. It's our human capital to be able to make this happen. We can only grow our robotics industry if we also have the educated people. We have to recognize that there are international investments in these areas. The European Union has just uh, announced or released a program that's 650 million euros. Korea, as part of their 21st century frontier program, has identified robotics as one of their 10 impact areas where they want to be market leaders. They want to be the leaders in robotics 2016. Japan is investing significantly in service robotics. In the US, we, the robotics industry was born here. We're still the market leaders in medical robotics and in, serv in service robotics. If we don't pick up this challenge, we're not going to be the market leaders five or 10 years down the road. So we feel that for robotics, there is real opportunities. It's a game changer. It's very important that we actually try to recognize the true potential of the near-term growth, both economically and terms of security applications. We also really try to identify robotics as a top R&D priority. How would we go about this? Our recommendation is that it might it, it would make sense to form an interagency working group on robotics technology under the National Science and Technology Council. This is a model that's been used in nano before, so it's a well-known model that has been very effective of making sure there is no single agency today that really owns robotics. It is deeply embedded in several different agencies and it would make sense to have such an interagency working group. What we would like to see is actually that the interagency working group on robotics technology would develop a plan for a national initiative in robotics science and technology to be uh, discussed with PCAST and with OSTP to make sure that it has that kind of breadth and it has sort of the right kind of, of, of impact. And we feel as component to a plan, we would like to see discussing where is the support for the, or how can we arrange for support for the world class on the, across the, the number of different ages. We have a need for basic research, we have a need for transition, we have a need for uh, applied research, we need to make sure that all of them are in the plan. We also think that it's very important to foster the transfer of technology. We can't just have it in the university labs. It's very important that we have the full value chain from basic research all the way to making real money. It's also important to sort of integrate robotic into sort of a competitiveness policy. You already heard there are a number of initiatives across the world, if we want to remain competitive, if we want to be the leaders in this field and capitalize on this, we need to make sure that we actually have it as one of our priorities. It's also very important to recognize that there are international efforts and we need to foster collaboration with these so that we can make sure that we are aware of what's happening and we can capitalize on this. We think that of course it's important that we have a number of competitive projects that are being funded across the different domains. Finally, as I've already mentioned, it's also important that we develop the human capital to really make this possible, because if we don't, it's not going to be sustainable in the long term. So we really also need to think about research, transfer, and education, all of them need to be solved in an industry strategy. I've invited three of my colleagues to comment on why this